Well, these fellows have been doing it very successfully, as a matter of fact. They travel all over the country. We'll hear some of their experiences and meet them in a moment or two. Ladies and gentlemen, the music explosion. <laughs> years ago, it was 1967, the summer of love, Linda Johnson's president of the United States, the U.S. is involved in the Vietnam War, and a song is climbing the charts by a Mansfield group. And that's who we're joined by today, is members of the group Music Explosion from right here in Mansfield, and uh, this is the 50th anniversary of their chart-busting song, Little Bit of Soul. Burton auditioned for a band that Tudor, who was the lead guitar player, I was the rhythm guitar player. Was it the Chosen Fruit? Yeah, yeah, you guys, well, you just were done with the King's English, weren't you? And then you guys, I don't know if you're still playing with them or not. I was just invited to come up and listen to them play. I, you know, I had heard them at the after football game, um, dances that Malabar had or different places. But I, you know, and I knew Rick from, we grew, grew up, up together. <laughs> I mean, we, you know, and I went to his fifth birthday party. So on top of the 50 years, I got a few more too. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's when I met, you know, the rest of the guys that were in the band. There were three guys, a drummer, uh, Bob Becker, and Rick, and, uh, uh, Don Atkins tutor. And none of us were lead singers, we were backup singers. So we we were scouting for a replacement lead singer and we heard about this fellow by the name of Jamie Lyons, who was in essence a Mick Jagger clone. That was a match made in heaven. So. You felt the chemistry that quickly. Oh, exactly. And uh, Jamie was such a showman. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And he got out there and he turned into Mick Jagger right in front of our eyes. We said, Man, we got to get this guy. You know, I'll, <laughs> I'll read, do, sitting there 18 years old, figuring out how you're going to get a, somebody that's 17 to come over and join him. Uh -huh. we, we put the hard sell on Jamie to. Uh, we embellished the fact that we had a, re a recording contract and nothing was stopping us and he didn't jump aboard and missed a great opportunity. We didn't have a recording contract. We didn't uh -huh. have any of the stuff we told him about. <laughs> but we pulled it up. <laughs> the beginning of the da 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 part, we, you know, Tudor and I worked on that to get, it was, when we heard it, it was more islandy. You know, I read somewhere, Burton, where your bass uh -huh. opening for that song is one of the most famous in rock and roll history. And that, that as soon as you hear that, you know exactly, it, it flashes directly to the song that's coming, you know. I thought that was pretty interesting. Have you ever reflected on the impact of that well, opening? Actually, it was the three of us because it was my, my bass, I turned all the treble on it. And these guys took their, they had the same guitar, Dredge guitars, and they had all the bass on theirs. Oh, I see. So when we, they, they played it, so if you listen to it, it's a weird sounding, plunky sound, but it was the one that everybody knew when they heard it. Exactly. When you recorded it, did you think, this is the one? This is the, this is the song that's gonna launch us? I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> on the radio, WABC said, this week, number one, it was a little bit of salt. <laughs> and we're walking in there, I thought, man, this it doesn't get better. Yep. Hey, the music explosion, gentlemen.